mode. Right, good. So first slide you're very familiar with, nothing different there at all. Mm -hmm. um, it is just you and I today, by the way, so uh, feel free to jump in at any point. Uh, what we're going to talk about are all the menus we didn't cover the other day. Um, and then we're going to, in the interactive session, we're going to play around with what we're discussing today. But um, I'd be very happy for you to raise any other issues if you've got any. Um, <clears throat> so you're all familiar with interactive. We can skip that one. So when I talk about second row menus, we're, I'm looking at this slot, which is in the top left corner of your parish online site. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to run through those all quickly. And you, of course, remember everything about all the first row menus. Uh, so second row, the top left corner. The home icon is really useful because it always brings you back to the known starting point. So, uh, you know, when you first start Parish Online, you end up with your, your parish um, centred um, and the scale sort of just right and everything on the left is the columns and that's what clicking on the home button does it takes you back there and it for me it has a really irritating habit of turning on the parish boundaries i've got something about parish boundaries <laughs> i don't like them but the mind a so if you had layers that were previously selected in um, because of what you were doing they stay selected so that's also very convenient so um, I, the home button is useful um the previous view is the next button, and we're going to just click on that. And what that does is takes you back, unsurprisingly, to the previous screen. And if you had one, clicking it again takes you back to the previous one, and so forth and so on. So um, and then there's the layers issue that the ones that were subsequently uh, or previously um, selected do not come back on. But uh, that's very straightforward. So drag zoom is this next weird little cropping sort of symbol, um, which is interesting because if you normally left click and drag the mouse, that just scrolls the page up, down, left or right. However, if you left click and then drag left, um, we're going to watch the pond, all right? So you can click the button up there. Mm -hmm. And what we've done now is uh, the screen has moved left, and the pond has disappeared. The pond at the right has appeared. And now, um, so basically that's just normal. We've done a left click and a, and a drag. Uh, and now we're gonna click on toggle drag, which when it's on gets underlined. And that changes all sorts of things. So what we've done now is the drag enables you to draw a, uh, a square around anything mm. and then it'll zoom into it. So look at the size of the building in there. Then we'll do what we dragged our little square around and we click on it. And now it's got a whole lot bigger. So it's just a, a very quick way of um, zooming in on a specific point. Uh, it's actually quite handy, but I don't know that many people use it. Um, you know, some people just find it's quicker to click and <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> drag, but entirely up to you. Anyway, it automatically turns itself off after each time of using it, so there's no longer an underline there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go back to normal <clears throat> uh, click and drag now. So, annotate layers is the second item on the menu. Um, and that shit brings up for you a whole bunch of uh, the annotations, if you've had any. So there may not be any here at all if you've never used Annotate, or there will be the ones that you've annotated before and not got rid of them. So what we've got here um, are the three that we've used in the past. So what we've got here as an example is just a, a picture of our recreation ground in Somerset. Uh, no particular layers turned on. We click on the Annotate Layers button and any layer that's been there, any annotation that's been there before comes roaring back mm -hmm. and the button gets underlined. So uh, this brings back all the annotations you've, you've selected in the past, regardless of whether you're in the right place. So if you moved around the screen and you had other annotations, they would pop up. 
um, it's again, it's a if you've got uh, annotations are basically used to highlight things when you're making a presentation. They're not supposed to be a permanent feature, although for many people they are. But by the same token, you may very well have three or four annotations all based on whatever area you're looking at. And just having an annotate layer button means you can turn them all on at once without having to go through and individually select them. So for making presentations and, and being smooth and slick and not tying everybody up whilst you're waiting, um, this is a great tool. So um, if you use annotations, um, which sometimes they're the, uh, by far the best way of, of making a, a point, um, then this is just a useful button to turn them all on at once. Okay, next item is the search layers, which we've touched on in the past. Uh, if I click on it, uh, it gives you a, a chance to type in to the search box what it is you want to looking for. And an example I always use is floods because that's very satisfying. Um, so you type in flood and click on the little um, magnifying glass up come the three sets of layers, the three collections that have anything to do with floods. So we're going to go into natural England and it comes up and says, look, we've got this agricultural land classification. And if you look at the shapes of these different colors, if we uh, turned on the, <clears throat> the legend, uh, it makes more sense. So we're gonna to go to view and legend and it shows us what these colors mean. So look in particular at the area of grade four land. So grade four, it turns out as you'll see in a minute is basically all pasture. And if we go back to our flood, flood selection slits, screen, deary me. And this time, instead of the natural England habitat, we go down to the Environment Agency, and I'm going to click on the zone three. Then you'll see where the water gathers when it floods. And lo and behold, it's almost an exact copy of the agricultural land use, which where this is all pasture. So you can see why it's all pasture, because the grass thrives from being underwater. Um, and other crops tend not to. So there's a, a, a direct correlation really here between where the water goes and what grows there, uh, which is very good if you're a dairy cattle man, not so good if you're into arable farming. Um, but that explains why the land use is what it is. So that's the use of the search button, just to narrow down the vast number of layers to a workable um, size it will deal with the topic that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just doing a summary. We've been through home to get you back to where you want to be. Uh, previous view to go back as many steps as you like to show what you're wanting. Drag zoom to highlight a specific thing with the left click and drag on the mouse. Uh, annotate layer to bring up all the layers that you've got annotations on um, at one go, just one button. Uh, and then the, the search layer, which is where we typed in flood. So we get mini menus now in three areas. There's a, a mini menu that comes from clicking in the layers. There's another mini menu that comes from clicking on a feature. And guess what? There's a mini menu to the mini menu. <laughs> uh, just for fun. So this I think you're familiar with. So any layer that's got uh, sorry, any collection, these are all layer collections. Any um, collection that's got a circle around it means it's, it's got a layer in there is toggled on. And you can open up and find out which layer is toggled on by clicking on any of the arrows. However, if you right click anywhere in a collection bar, that will turn on everything in that collection. So that can be very useful, but it's probably a mistake to do it in parish layers. <laughs> <laughs> You'll ring up everything, but it is a toggle all. Um, and if you do that on the aerial photography, the overhead photography, <laughs> you sit for hours waiting for all to download. But if we now go to say asset register and right click there, well, so I shouldn't have done that in the diagram, but uh, it brings up every, layer in the asset register and they're all time uh, sorry they're all doing a right click in the asset register brings up the toggle or layers button and then if you click on the icon 
lo and behold, they all open up. You don't know that they've opened up because you can't see it, but they are all told on. And if you look at the map itself, then any icons that are in the asset register will show up like we have here. So just clicking on the asset register, you can see now that every single layer within the asset register has been toggled on. So it's just a quick way of toggling everything in one particular collection. Right click again, and they will toggle off. So once you're in a layer rather than in the collection itself, then right clicking anywhere in any of these layers will bring up this first mini menu. So this is the layer mini menu and uh, really, really useful. In fact, I think this is probably the most used uh, feature within